Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we ask that you shine on us. Shine on us this morning. And take all the glory and the praise in the name of Jesus. I appreciate my friend again for the opportunity to be at the Lecky Le Le campus. God bless Pastor B. We started a journey um, at the first service, and it's an adventure of faith. We are looking at the foundations of faith, the foundations of faith. So in the first service, we looked at foundations of faith, spiritual facts. And now we are looking at foundations of faith, divine promises. Turn your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter number 4. Amen. Foundations of faith, divine promises. Romans chapter number 4. Beginning from verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. And the promise made of none effect. Because the law walketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. I'll, I'll take time to explain that. To the end, what's the goal? The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. That's the first scripture, and that's where that's a laboratory where we'll be doing our experiments this morning. But to introduce this um, laboratory, we ne may need to do Romans chapter 10. Quickly, turn your Bible. The popular faith scripture, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, the popular Faith scripture, you know the scripture. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? Now, I'd like us to begin an investigation. We'll begin this lecture this morning with an investigation. I'd like us to do a linguistic recovery. We want to check that word of God. The word translated word in that scripture. So faith cometh by hearing and what? And hearing by the word of God. You, 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 if you are acquainted with King James rendering, which is the best rendering I, in my own opinion, uh, what happened in that scripture is an attempt to show you the kind of hearing that we're talking about. Because you understand hearing in a certain context. And the fit ear is different from your natural ear. So he's trying to introduce you to another kind of hearing. And is based on the second kind of hearing that is about to introduce to you now that you can receive faith. First investigation we need to do, which I said is linguistic, is the word word. If you have um, a lexicon, a Bible that is digital, and you can launch a linguistic investigation, 
If you click on word, you will find rhema. Faith cometh by hearing, the kind of hearing that captures the rhema of God. Are you still with me? Now, just in case someone is saying, why is it speaking Greek? I came with a dictionary to explain rhema in English language. Hallelujah. So, just in case you have a strong lexicon, you'll find a pilot number G4483. That's what captures rhema. Rhema fundamentally is an utterance, a spoken word, a proceeding word. We are talking about the foundations of faith. It's the reason why we need to investigate the foundations of faith is because so many people claim to be walking in faith, and if we test the content of their faith, it is not established on the foundations. The, you can be engaged in an activity that looks so much like faith, but it is not a product of what is foundational. And uh, that kind of faith cannot move mountains, can't produce results. So I want to show you something quickly so that you understand how faith works. How, what is the proof that I'm actually walking in faith and walking by faith? Okay. The dictionary says um, that which is or has been uttered by the living voice, thin spoken word. So rhema is not a disposition that God sustains in the privacy of his heart. Rhema is the spoken word of God. And the Bible is saying that faith cometh by hearing. And just so that you not be confused, it's a different kind of hearing. is a hearing of faith where our spirits are trained to hear the proceeding word of God that comes out of the mouth of God. So we may need to paraphrase that scripture to lend it to understanding faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the voice of God. Because if God doesn't utter his voice, you will never receive revelation, the present revelation position that is captured in the spirit about a matter. Is that clear? Now, once upon a time, a guy came to me. He says, Pastor, I want to go for youth service and I... Um, want to, um, you to pray for me so that my journey into youth service will be fruitful. I said, that's not how it works. Because most people um, outsource their responsibilities and believe that it is summed up in a pastor's prayer. As powerful as our prayers are, I need to show you how it works. I told him, you need to go to God and extract a promise from God. Then when you extract a promise from God, come to pastor. Because you need to believe in the Lord your God in order for you to be established. But you need to believe in his prophets. God has given us the ability to bequeath to you what it takes for you to flourish. What it, the circumstances and situations that will be conducive for the word of God that you have received to come to pass. We can bless you with that. So the guy went and took a fast, and he came back and said, I don't understand. God spoke, but I don't understand. He gave me a scripture. And what was the scripture? The scripture was that the cruise, you know that scripture that um, Elijah told the widow woman? He said, the barrel of meal shall not waste, and the cruise of oil shall not fail. Hallelujah. I said, I, I think um, the word is clear. The cruise of oil. <laughs> it shall not fail. So when he came with that word, I blessed him. Go and prosper. In the light of these words that the Lord has given unto you. And he went to the place. He happens to be an expert in, in mathematics. So he began to teach mathematics. And, and um, the, the keg that he came with, the keg of palm oil that he came with, um, when he's about to run out, then one of the guys he's teaching will feel the sense of responsibility to send him palm oil. And he tops that cake, all right? So he kept topping it for one year. The, the 
first time he successfully emptied the keg of palm oil was his passing out parade day. So, the cruise of oil did not fail according to the word of God. If we're talking about the foundations of faith, then we need to ask you. Because you, many of us think faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Bible. And then you believe that everything that is in the Bible is for you. No. It is that which God takes out of the pages and applies, furnishes upon your heart that is yours. Faith is very personal. Faith is self-centered. Faith, faith. Are you with me? Yes. Very personal. There can, a, a declaration can go forth and it goes forth in the congregation like this. Whether or not it's appropriated in your life is whether or not you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit to apply that on your heart. When it is applied upon your heart, it stops being a general thing. It becomes a personal thing. And so the Bible reveals that Abraham had a promise. And I need to show you the kind of promise that he had. It's, it's a kind of promise that was so large that it was unthinkable for him to expect that it could come to pass by his ability. You know, God is a good God. When he comes into your space, he will tell you things that you don't even have the ability to accomplish, that it is captured within your destiny. Your possibilities in the future will be revealed in this wise. Just like when he came to me, he said, you are going to be a preacher. You need to know how terrible a stammerer I was. My mom heard me preach and she knew this was not her son because I had terrible speech impediments and the great monarch of Zion said, you are going to be my messenger. So one day I got frustrated. I lay on the altar, on the platform like this, fasting and praying, and I say, God, why do you want to make a mockery of me? And he spoke into my spirit. He said, as for you, this is the covenant I have with you. I have put my words in your mouth. Then I heard it with the ear of the spirit. And wisdom began to give me the understanding of his dimensions. I understood that if God has smuggled his word into my mouth, the word he wants me to speak, is no longer my responsibility to determine how it is spoken. So my challenge now is to go and seek God and get a word. Then it will be God's responsibility to give me the ability to speak. Even this morning, I had to wake up early in the morning. Cry. Oh, my. You don't, want to, you don't want to hear me speak if I don't find utterance. It will be a terrible moment. In fact, hallelujah. But you see, it's on the promise that God gave me. I'm still using that one promise for so many years in my spoken ministry. Faith has a foundation. And our father Abraham was given a promise by God. Now, now that it's a fasting season for the whole church, labor before God and get God to commit himself by a promise. This is what I'm going to do. Once he says it, then your faith has a foundation. Even if you tarry, wait for it. Because it will come to pass. For God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man. He is not capable of lying. It's not part of what he can do. It's, he doesn't have the ability to lie. It's not that God is a gentleman. And even though he can lie, he chooses not. I'm saying God doesn't have the ability to lie. The ability to lie is not with him. So let's consider the promise God gave Abraham quickly. Are you there? Romans chapter 4. Romans 4, quickly. All right, so 13 to 16. The promise was that Abraham was going to be the heir of the world. Have you seen it there? Instead, in 13, the heir of the world. There was something that God was going to release into the life of Abraham that is not only for Abraham. Is for every family of the earth in every generation whatsoever. You know, are you with me? 
God wants to distribute something to every family on the earth. And what he does is that he consecrates a man and gives him custody of everything that he wants to give to every family in the earth. The extent to which you can tap into that which he has, which he received for your own family, is the degree to which you are related to him. God does not bless individuals. God blesses Abraham. It is your relationship with Abraham that will determine how you retrieve your portion. Are you with me? All right. So God gave him a promise. He will be the heir of the world. God gave him a promise that he will be father of nations and that in him shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's a promise. Abraham had to labor in order for him to become that which God said he will be. Are you with me? Because if you receive a promise, you have also received the responsibility. So Abraham had to labor. Those are the works of faith. That's the action that comes alongside with the promise that God gave you in order for you to see the fulfillment of that which God has spoken. For instance, once upon a time, the Lord encountered me. And he said, I will give you the ability to be a custodian of revelation. Revelatory powers in my world. That's God. Are you there? So in order for me to maximize that deposit, I began to study the Bible all night. See? It means I believe God. So my, I my action changed. I began to labor in the study of the word of God, the Bible, and I found out that God kept his commitment because anytime I sit on the scriptures, it opens like a book. It opens like a discussion, as if someone is discussing with me. Are you with me? If God puts that oil upon your head and you are not, it doesn't translate to the act of study. That oil will not be maximized. So, when you have received a promise from God, there is a responsibility that is bequeathed to you on the strength of that promise. There's an adjustment that you have to make on the strength of that promise. And uh, that is a proof that you have heard the God that cannot lie. You have heard a God that is not a son of man that cannot repent. Hallelujah. So let us see the things that Abraham had to do in order for him to become what God has said. I just need to show you a few things that God said unto him. First of all, God said, you are going to be the heir of the world. Can you see the second thing that God said in um, verse 16? Is it? Verse 17, God said something else. He said, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. 18, I want to show you something. Who against hope, it was not convenient. He, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. God promised him, but there was a change in his lifestyle. That was in keeping with that promise that God gave him. Now, we will know if God spoke to you. If you have adjusted your lifestyle to accommodate that which God spoke. Because there was something Abraham had to do so that he could become the father of many nations. He didn't just come because God spoke. He came because Abraham began to take actions in the light of that which God has spoken on to him. So we are going to see some of the actions that he took because the action that, that we take based on our belief is the physical evidence of the convictions that have found root upon our heart. So there is a conviction aspect of faith. There's an action aspect of faith. 
And if we see it here, the actions that you will need to take because something has been forged on your heart, you, it, it looks like warfare. Just take, take note. First, you'll find some verbs and some phrases that are actions that Abraham had to take. The Bible says, whom against hope believed in hope. So what was on his heart was so tangible, so real, and it was bigger than his circumstances. He did not consider his circumstances because something was forged in his spirit. Hallelujah. I was doing a fast, praying, and it came to pass that I had a dream. And what was the dream about? There was a madman that was brought to me and I prayed for the madman in the name of Jesus, and the madman was here. What kind of dream is this? I woke up and said, hey. A few days later, they brought a madman to me. And when I looked closely, the madman was like, the madman I saw. But you know what? He was very mad. <laughs> the only challenge... <laughs> was that the guy was very mad. So in faith, you are going to exalt that picture that the Holy Spirit furnished much more than the symptoms you see in the environment. The Bible says, against hope, he believed in hope. For many of us, when you see the, the giants, it seems to diminish your conviction. And then you begin to rethink, re-strategize. Every act of re-strategization in, 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 in such a context is just yielding to unbelief. It is simple. The, the vision was simple. I stood up and I said, Kai! Leave. And then suddenly I saw he was really mad. And, and when they read out his, his medical account, I saw a word there, often violent. How <laughs> And it was on Christmas Day. <laughs> Suddenly you just have an idea that, ah, you were supposed to visit somebody. So just, but in the dream, I prayed, I rebuked the spirit. You know what? While we were still there, the guy began to slam his head on the wall. Jesus didn't send me there to check, to, to supervise his, his act of madness. What was it? Can you believe what is happening here and, and consider it superior to that which you see? You know what helped me? There were people around that knew that I was a pastor. So, it would be embarrassing for me not to do something like prayer. <laughs> Sometimes when God wants to take you to another level of faith, he, there will be people there that, that, that hold you in high esteem. <laughs> so actually, that day it was not my faith. It was God's faith. But I was determined just to try what I saw. And I said, Sunday, I just called his name. That was the first time he answered his name. He said, Hmm. It means Sunday was somewhere there. Sunday was in there somewhere. He may be bound, but he was somewhere. It was not the demon that answered me. It was Sunday. And I rebuked the spirit. Guess what happened? I was in a psychiatric ward. Though. As I rebuked the spirit on Sunday. Guess what happened? Nothing happened to Sunday. But everything happened to every other person that was in the world. The nurses, guess who they cast out? It was not the demons. It was me. They cast me out from the world and threatened me <laughs> never to return again. I saw the nurses were managing demonic situations. Those guys don't need care. They need an evangelist. And it came to pass that I told the parents of the guy that if you want him healed, discharge him. 
and bring him to me. They argued, but they discharged the guy. It took 13 minutes of prayer. Sunday was restored. This is the Sunday. The reason why he became mad was because he joined an occult group. And they said you need to break one of the Ten Commandments. And the one that the Spirit said he would break is he must commit adultery with his mother. That if he doesn't do it on the 14th day, he will become mad or he will die. So he became mad. But before he did that, he confessed to the mother. I joined something. Um, they said I should do this. I couldn't see. I, no, I couldn't do it. So, but if I don't, if I die, don't worry, bury me. If I grow mad, please try so that I can be restored. Sunday was not just healed, he went back to university and he graduated. Today, people think I am a mighty man of faith, but I'm telling you the back end of that experiment. Against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of nations. Number one, the Bible says that he was not weak in faith and he considered not. The first, the first expression of his faith was that he considered not the deadness of his own body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. There was, there was something that was at work on his heart that had the ability to convince him that the issues with his body was not a challenge. He considered not. That was the first thing. You see, may God give you the grace to consider not. Because many things will be staring you in the face. But that which has found expression upon your heart if you consider it bigger than the circumstances, you will consider not. When God is raising a star, the devil will put so many hindrances in his way. And the point is, what will you consider to have more authority? Is it the circumstance or the work of the spirit of God that is going on on your heart? Number two, the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not. That means it, it was not a, a situation of him believing today and falling out of his believing tomorrow, recovering himself. The Bible says it was constant. He staggered not. That was his default mode. And the reason for this mode was because there was something planted on his heart that he considered stronger, more authoritative than all the other evidences that he saw in the natural outlook. I will not consider. I will not stagger. Number two, and finally, the Bible says he was strong in faith. What was the evidence for that? He gave glory to God. So the proof of the strength of your faith is your praise life. Is your praise life. Your praise life, the, the, the chimney of your praise that is oozing out of your heart is an evidence to all, to demons, to angels, to God, to Satan, that this matter in my heart is settled. It's not subject to editing. It's not subject to. It is settled. He was strong in faith and he gave glory to God. This morning, we are going to call those things that be not as though they were. There was a time in my life, probably I had an upgrade, a promotion in the spirit. And God says, I want to begin to use you in a, in a new way. A way that you are not used to. That was when the prophetic ministry began to open up. He said, I will use you to declare seasons over cities. Declare seasons over the lives of men. But if you want to do that, don't look at the... Do you understand Someone that has been, he has been in poverty for 30 something years and he has lost hope and then God will not send you there. The days of prosperity are upon you. You, you, you need to be sure. But he said, I want to be using you like that. I'll send you to a city. 
probably a city that is hooked up, is manipulated by witchcraft. And you proclaim liberty. And when you do it, I'll begin to work it out. I saw diverse miracles. So I want to lead you so that we can do the same this morning. Because a new season is about to open in your land. Oh, Jesus. You are going to decree the things that be not. As though they were. God will honor your voice. He will honor your words. And he will open doors in the spirit to bring to pass that which your heart has believed. Today, consider not the challenges that befell you in 2022. The people that betrayed you. The doors that were shot at you. Consider it not. There is something that God is doing. He's moving upon your spirit. And you will see his words come to pass in your life. In a moment, can you begin to decree that in 2022, this is what I will see and no power from the kingdom of darkness will be able to resist. Jesus. I am a seeker. I ko barasko patwale masido abrake subelete amai kompela shika bresko bono seli akabasalwa tama braska balatwa shenia kompetama kopela shima. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I see a horn of oil. There are five people in this congregation. God wants to bring you into the prophetic like he brought me some years ago. An anointing will come upon you. And then from today you will begin to see and hear like a prophet. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. In the next seven seconds, the anointing will begin to drop. You will see and hear like a prophet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you stretch forth your hand and anoint the prophets. Anoint those five prophets. Anoint the five prophets. Anoint the five prophets. Anoint the five prophets. Anoint the five prophets. He's coming. He's coming now. Anoint them. Let your hand descend. 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 Holy Ghost, I ask, I ask, let it be stronger, 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 stronger. In the name of Jesus. You will see, you will hear. You will see, you will hear. You will see, you will hear. Also, as if you find any of them, let me just lay hands on them. You will see, you will hear. That the burnings of the Lord. The burdens of Jehovah that will come upon you. The burdens of the Lord in the morning. When danger is about to come, you will see it a mile away before it finds expression. The hand of God will be upon the hand of God. It will be upon you so mightily. So mightily. I see a door open. Enter in the name of Jesus. See and hear from today. 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 See and hear in the name of Jesus. See and hear. Oh. Your eyes of understanding. It will be a light. Praise will be given unto you in the name of Jesus. 
intercessors. Two intercessors. You've been laboring. The Lord is coming to change your rank. There's an anointing that will come upon you. It like fire. 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 He staggered not at the promise through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. I see somebody in our midst, you find it difficult to sleep. You find it difficult to sleep. Can you run out quick? Oh, don't re strategize when God speaks to you, don't change your mind because of circumstances. Find it difficult to sleep. I saw you. We'll break that yoke right now. Break that yoke right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Okay. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's time for you to speak in tongues. The Lord will take us on the ride in the Spirit. Finally, there's someone in the congregation. You are losing hearing in one of your ears. You are losing hearing in one of your ears. Can you wave to me? One of your ears losing hearing. Follow me. Follow this instruction. Take this finger. Put it in the ear that cannot hear well. Put it there. Cover it. Close it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I destroy deafness. Deafening spirits be bound. Be bound. Be bound. Come out of the ears in the name of Jesus. Remove the finger. If you are close to them, cover the ear that can hear now. If you are close to them, help me check the check that ear quickly. Cover the ear that can hear completely. If you are close to them, test the ear. Test now. Test now. Test now. If the person can hear, give me a wave. If the person can hear, give me a wave. If the person can hear, give me a wave. Test the ear now. Test it now. If the person can hear, give me a wave. Give me a wave. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break that yoke. I release your people into destiny. 2022. Can she hear? Okay. 2022. It will be that year of God's intervention. In the name of Jesus. 